I'm standing here at the root of the famous Obudu Plateau, surrounded by lovely hills and amazing scenery. But the true prize of today's trip lies at the top of the mountain. I'm getting ready to meet the team at the Obudu Conservation Center. I hear they're doing amazing things with preserving the environment, building the ecosystem, and getting the local community involved. I'm so excited about this trip, and I can't wait to see what I discover when I get to the top of the hill. Tourism, you're right, is one of our four pillars. Yeah. It's also uh, one of the ways we want to help promote the community yeah. because tourism is one of the uh, was one of their economic of income, yeah it was, right? was one, yeah tourism yeah. was one of the sources of income. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the ranch became uh, less popular, mm -hmm. to put it lightly, uh, the people felt that yeah they really felt that loss mm -hmm. because a lot of people made money from selling their honey mm -hmm. or selling their artisan products mm -hmm. or um, even working within the resort mm -hmm. but if you don't have patrons they don't yeah, they don't have it yeah they don't make money mm -hmm. so that has really affected the mm -hmm. local community and we feel that if we um, position ourselves mm -hmm. as uh, an NGO that welcomes tourism mm -hmm. ecotourism or mm -hmm. just people who want to have a nice holiday and walk yeah. around, not do anything crazy. Uh -huh. um, we want to be there to welcome yeah. them. Okay. And the community also wants to be there to welcome them. Mm. Yeah. Can we pick up the kind of stuff? Um, are we going to like feed in tents? Just break it down for me. Well, you can expect everything depending okay. on what you want. All right. So okay. it can go from like mountain climbing mm -hmm. and six hour hikes to <laughs> I put you off already. <laughs> but on the other hand, you could be having a glass of wine looking at yeah. the mountains. <laughs> you could, um, we have bonfires that we organize. We have barbecues that we also organize. Um, there are a lot of waterfalls that you can go and take picnics by. We have a really interesting program called the Women's Woodluck Program okay. and it's very dear to us because it's our first initiative that we ever that we've started and it's um, the purpose of the initiative is to protect the airplane field forest. It's Great. found in Great. the middle of the, the ranch okay. and um, it was also a very strong tourist attraction okay. like, uh, about over two decades ago. Mm -hmm. But as the time has gone on, the community has been logging and hunting mm -hmm. the animals within. Now we're protecting the, the area, mm -hmm. so no one's allowed to go in there anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is the entrance of the forest reserve that's been started by the Conservation Center. Mm -hmm. I told you the name, it's very Oh, it's the Women's Woodluck Program. Mm -hmm. And we termed it that because it's ordinarily in this community, the Opazanga community, is the women that go out and fetch the firewood. They're very active in, um, in the local community and it was actually Joe. Joe came up with the name and the, yes. <laughs> I personally have the passion when I saw the pressure on the, fire, in the forest because there was fire outbreak into the forest and then the cutters uh, trembling on, uh, on vegetation. So I was not happy. So when Nela come and we talk about Obudu Conservation Center and then we say we should include this. So he, she accepted with the idea. And then now we have to work together with the Upper Zago community to see how we can join hands together and protect the forest for them. And the idea behind the program or the initiative is to preserve this forest because it's not just a source of water for the local community, it's also home to many animals and bird life, especially, and also plant life species in the region that can't be found again once lost. Um, you have deers, you have antelopes, we have a civic cat, which hasn't been sighted in a while, so we're quite scared that they may be extinct from this specific area. But um, we also have many bird species that are internationally endangered as well. We're setting up 
uh, artificial, a man-made forest rather than non-artificial forest, a man-made forest, yeah. And it's also going to promote planting. Because we are first going to fence off the area and then the second phase is to plant fast-growing uh, trees such as sycamores and um, eucalyptus trees so the, the community can still use that as a source of income yeah. as well as their own fire wood because you don't want to strip away their social economic um, privilege from this yeah. from this um, project mm -hmm. so um, we want a situation where it benefits both nature and the and local community the so they can live harmoniously and you said that the sycamore and eucalyptus are indigenous to yes they're area. indigenous to this area I didn't know we yeah no we do we really do. See, this place is very cool yeah. And because of no electricity here, mm. so right from the decade, people have been using for wood, and then mm. it's very important for them. Mm. Because mm. that is what they want their rooms to stay. Mm -hmm. So they mm. use for wood in cooking, in mm. the, I mean the room, and so on and so forth. This is such a zen. It is. Like I'm having a major zen moment here, especially after that adrenaline in the <laughs> vibe that we did. Uh, yeah. is, what, is, this is a local, what's the stream called? It's called the Etisla um, stream because it runs all the way down to the dry woodland areas. Mm -hmm. So a local community called the Opazanga community, they call it the Etisla stream. This is the main source of, of water? Yes, this is the community's main source of water, so this is why we're fighting to protect it. Yeah. Because right now you have a lot of deforestation going on, mm -hmm. and if you continue to cut down the trees, this um, source, which starts all the way up there, yeah. is going to dry out, and the community won't have access to water. They use it for their, their drinking, their bathing, like anything that would require water. They're um, cooking as well, they get the water from here. Uh, once you protect <coughs> the area, you talked about um, creating a barricade. Yes. So that, in a way, also ensures that this stays mm -hmm. safe. Yes. At least up to the source, right? Yes, yes, entirely, yes. Are there any other streams? Um, no, yeah, I think there, there are other ones, but they've dried up. They've dried up. There are other streams within the region. The streams that are totally dry because of deforestation. Yeah. Now, there's sometimes this opinion that you, you have to come to the ranch um, only at a particular time mm -hmm. each year, you know. Um, what, is there a best time to come or is it a thing of whenever you come, there's always, it's always a different experience? Whenever you come, it's always a different experience. Mm -hmm. If you're worried about the rain, I'd suggest that you come between the months of October to April. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, you might have slight drizzles, but then mm -hmm. from July to August, you have very heavy rainfall. Okay. But it's still very beautiful because the, the grass is very lush mm -hmm. and green. You mm -hmm. have the clouds surrounding you in the mornings. It's very fresh and it's clear in the mornings um, before the clouds descend. Mm -hmm. um, but then you also have the contrast of the very dry season. Yeah. So the grass isn't as green, mm -hmm. but it's not raining every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's like a slight <laughs> benefit. But it's, um, and uh, there are different activities that you can do during different times. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the rainy seasons, you may not be able to go and sit by the waterfall because mm -hmm. the current may be too strong. Yeah. Whereas you can do that during the dry season. So it's entirely yeah. dependent on what you're looking for. Yes. And you, you can advise, you know, based on what people are looking for mm -hmm. to say or when people want to come. Yeah. Yeah. This and this and this yeah. Great to do. But that's a really good question because I get that all the time. Like, when should I come? I was like, you can come anytime, anytime. anytime. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what you'd prefer. It's the same as um, any mountain around the world. Like, mm -hmm. uh, even in South America, they have their winter and they have their yeah. summer. Yeah. It just depends on what kind of temperatures or climate you'd like to be in.